it's not the most mainstream sport, I think it would be fair to say. Obviously, it does have a big following. What was it that got you into that sport particularly uh, at first? Yeah, you're right. Obviously, it's not, you know, you tell a lot of, when I t even like my friends that have known me for years, they still don't get it. So it's it's still trying to tell them what it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, my dad used to play um, sort of, well, I guess you call it professional, didn't travel um, around the world, but he played and 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 also my mum played like socially as well. So we, um, me and my brothers and sister, we were, we were kind of brought up on it really and a uh, member of a squash club from a really young age and just used to get taken there all the time as kids because my dad was coaching most of the time. So it was that's where we, where we sat all the time. So it didn't take too long before I was like, I'm a bit bored of sat off here now. Come on, I'll have a go. So kind of that's how I really um, got into it. What sort of age were you when you first gave it a go? I don't, I don't really know. I would say quite young. I would, I always say if people ask me, like I would say four or five. I started playing at really very, very young. Um, I probably went on a little before and just sort of, you know, scraped the ball on the floor or something. Um, but yeah, I would say pretty young, probably like four or five. So this this, this podcast, we've sort of it's a merger of sport and Cardiff. You're from? Are you, were you born in Cardiff? Was it? Yeah, born in Cardiff, but moved up to North Wales, yeah. How old were you when you moved up to North Wales? Um, ten. Ten. So, yeah, born and bred in Cardiff, lived there till I was ten, and then moved up here now, so... Do you still have any relatives in this area, or is everyone... Yeah, up? all my relatives. We have no family up here, just uh, me, my brother and my sister, and mum and dad are here. Um, and, yeah, I still have a, a, a decently sized family down down in Cardiff, so still, I, sp I still spend quite a lot of time there during, um, for training and stuff, uh, so yeah, still, still feels, still feel like I'm half home when I'm there. What part of Cardiff was it where you started training originally though, was it, I'm assuming, one of the leisure centres in the area? No, St. Mellons. Oh, St. Mellons? Yeah, so I used to live in St. Mellons, so, um, the country club there, um, it was pretty big when I was a kid. It was it was kind of like the hub at the time. It had like five squash courts, and it was just buzzing with players and stuff. And it's kind of it was kind of where our national centre was really. Um, and now obviously it's moved into the Sport World Centre and stuff like that now. So I imagine there must have been a point growing up where you thought this you know I, I want to take this from a hobby to being professional. Yeah. When how old were you at that sort of age? When did you decide you know I'm going to focus on this this is my career it was quite it was quite late I think I always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to be a professional but didn't really know what that entailed or what it meant it was kind of just you know you say it you say it when people say well, what are you doing when you're older you know and it was just something I said really um but I, I think uh, I was about 16 17 when I thought I really would like to do this properly um and decided to make the the jump and do it then which at the time you never know whether it's a good idea or not really it's like oh is this the right thing to do and I dropped out of school to do it as well, so it doesn't always doesn't always go well. So it was kind of a bit nervous for a while, but it's a big big decision that is dropping out of school. What, what yeah, we, uh, especially coming home and telling your parents that as well. It's like, oh, this isn't going well. You know, you, you're like, oh, I don't know about this, but um, they were really supportive, and and I was doing my uh, AS levels and find them really difficult. Um, not the most academic person. Um, way more, school's more of a social thing for me, um, so I was trying to, it was kind of hard to like play squash a lot as I was then, and also trying to do my schoolwork at the same time, so something kind of had to give either way really. Of course it t now transpires it was a great decision. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like you look back now and you think, I'm so glad I did it, but it could easily have gone the other way as well, so, um, but now I'm definitely happy that I made the decision, that's for sure. If, if it's okay with you, we might, we're going to look through a few of your sort of career highlights and, and sort of trip down some of the best moments. I mean, yeah. you've had the Commonwealth, the Welsh Nationals, the British Nationals. Do, do any of them stick out for you as, as, a, as the highlight? Uh, <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, the Commonwealth Games is probably a big highlight, I think. Um, and just in terms of the the... The size of the games, obviously, it's just massive, and it's you see all the other athletes there, and it's it's just more it's more than squash. Um, 
and for us as squash players, we, we're not an Olympic sport, so that is our biggest event that we we um, participate in. And when I went to Glasgow the four years before, it was just the most amazing experience I've ever ever gone through, really. And, and it was always a dream to win a medal, no matter the colour, um, just to be out there. And, and it was so unexpected as well. So that that probably like started the ball kind of rolling um, in terms of in terms of my career, really. And I think. That probably sticks out as the highlight for that reason, really. Um, are there are there plans to get squash? Uh, uh, please excuse my my knowledge on this, but it, yeah. you've mentioned it's not an Olympic sport. Are there plans to to get it in the Olympics? Is that a, I imagine that the governing bodies are really going to be pushing for that? Yeah, we've been trying for years. Um, we narrowly missed out on twenty twenty, which now obviously is going to be next year. But we narrowly really missed out on that. And, that was our big push for years, was trying to get into that one, but it didn't work out. And to be honest, we've been trying for ages. I, I, I don't understand why we're not in it. I think we fit it absolutely perfectly in so many different ways. Yeah, because uh, lots of similar sports oh are in it, aren't they? You know, the likes of badminton and tennis are all included. It seems strange yeah. that squash isn't. Yeah, it's really odd. And I, I don't know what it is and what we can do. You know, we, we proposed a massive, put loads of money into it, proposed quite a big sort of program for it and it just didn't come through so I don't know where we go from here whether we keep trying or don't try obviously it's what we want we definitely want to be an Olympic sport because from that comes so much more opportunity for the sport um, but it seems it's proving quite difficult for us which is very frustrating yeah I can imagine that doesn't sound doesn't sound fair if anything I mean I'm no. not, I don't work for the IOC but that that does sound strange to me you, yeah. it, you it's clear from sort of social media channels that you love, you know, playing an individual sport, which squash can be, but also representing Wales, like you said, yeah. at the Commonwealth Games. Is, is it, you, you hear football players, you know, I think Gareth Bale said it recently, that he feels different when he puts on the red jersey for Wales. Does it feel different for you when you represent your country instead of sort of just playing individually? Yeah, absolutely it does. I would 100% agree with, with that comment because, yeah, I mean, we play all year round, travelling the world by ourselves. We, we're not obviously like tennis, we don't carry a big team with us, unfortunately. You know, every now and then we might have a coach there from the governing body, but we don't have um, the money to be travelling with a team. So for me, I, it does definitely feel different and it's something that's so special and it has been from day one really and it still, to this day, is very important to me. Um, and the highlight of the year is the time that we get to play for Wales. So, as you said before, the Commonwealth Games then is just like another level on top of that. Um, and some of my best memories are playing with the team. Um, and even when we're at the Commonwealth Games and we're playing individually, it's, we're still playing as a team there. So, um, yeah, definitely it's, it's so important to me and I, I absolutely love it. One of the other places which I saw you play was the World Champs this year, which was in Egypt, was it in Cairo? Yeah. Oh, sorry, la last year it was. Yeah. That the the setting for that looked absolutely incredible. I've, ne I've never yeah. seen anything like that. It was the, the backdrop with the pyramids, sort of your glass box. Yeah. It reminded me of the cube, that old uh, the ITV <laughs> game show. I don't know what you mean. So it was this big sort of glass cube right in the middle with the most incredible view. That must have been amazing. Oh, honestly, it's it's the most unreal thing to play on that court. Um, we've had I've played there once, but didn't make it to the glass court to play on that court so they, they use a back venue as well um, just because obviously there's too many matches to fit on there so that's kind of the show court and it was like everyone we were all week all we were like right we've got to make the glass court we've got to make the glass court because it's just an unbelievable set and I, I just it honestly like it's kind of like you just stand there and you think this isn't real it's to so many people they see pictures and they're like this is amazing and it's like it looks even cooler in person as well so that's the great thing about squash, we can go and play anywhere, really. Oh, you can't get distracted and was playing, it's just like, oh, that's right, nice little cute, there. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely very easy to do. It, it's yeah. big in Egypt, isn't it? It's, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the sort of common knowledge about squash, but loads of the top 10, 20 ranked players in the world are, are from Egypt, aren't they? Is it, is it the national sports there? Uh, it's not. I think football actually is a national sport, oh, really? which still baffles me because they are unbelievable at squash. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the craziest country in so many ways. Um, it's very like full on, but their squash is unbelievable. They've got like, I mean, 
off the top of my head, I think the top ten the women they've got about five. Yeah. And the men is probably the same. I'm not not hundred percent sure of this exact moment, but it's pretty close to that. It's unbelievable. And every time I go, I'm so baffled at the amount of children and people they've got playing at one time. Like the age they start is a joke, and the amount of hours they put in at a young age is honestly it's it's crazy, and it shows now the level that they're playing at is like beyond anything else, really. Obviously, for a lot of reasons, you know, with what's going on in the world, this season was cut short, not just for squash, but for, for lots and lots of other sports. Your season yeah. got cut even shorter, didn't it? With with an ankle injury in New York. How how are you with that now? Is it everything recovered? Yeah, it's, it's, it's back to normal now. Everything's fine. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how it feels right now, only because I'm not on court. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm doing um, all the stuff that I normally do in training, but obviously minus that change of direction when I don't know where the ball is going, um, which is really hard to replicate unless you're on the court. So, but in terms of everything else, it feels really good. Um, just the most annoying timing. Uh, but, I mean, it's never a good time to get injured anyway, so. Have you been quite lucky in your career in terms of injuries? Yeah, pretty lucky. I had the same ankle I did seven years ago. Uh, exactly the same thing. So managed to like last seven years on it, which was quite good. So there's a positive in that. Um, and yeah, I've been touch. I mean, touch wood, nothing too bad, and nothing that keeps me out for too long, which, which is very good. Are there any plans for the return of squash? Obviously, football's back tonight in in the Premier League, and yeah. rugby's got a date in August. Is there any sort of solid plans yet for the return? No, not not as of yet. Um, in terms of, so they're talking maybe end of August, September, um, but it would be a lot. The only problem we've got, obviously, in like the Premier League and apart from loads of other reasons, is obviously it's kept in one place. Yeah. Um, so I think the first step will probably be to have some sort of um, UK only events. So only us who live in the UK or have been based here the whole time will be able to play in those um, with no ranking points, but at least some prize money up for grabs for us to. Um, obviously take some money while we can um, and yeah probably build it that way before they can start travelling again because obviously that's the biggest issue we have you just want to get back in play now don't you oh honestly like, <laughs> you know the worst part is that all like the countries that locked down before we locked down of like are all back playing and able to get on court at least and do some training and it's like it's so hard to see people who have been back playing you're like we're not even on court at all yet like haven't been on once so it's it's obviously very frustrating yeah how have you been training what have you sort of been given a personal sort of regime to be keeping up with yeah i i mean i'm i um train with some of the guys from sport wales um and they've been amazing throughout all of this they've been keeping close contact every couple of weeks if not you know, over text or whatever if, if need anything and we just have a set programme that I'm following day to day, similar to what I would do normally, but obviously just minus the squash and and being very inventive with some new sessions. Um, obviously the weather's been amazing which has really helped to get outside a lot, but this past couple weeks hasn't been great. So um, just yeah, keeping keeping it nice and fresh and just finding new ways to train, which in one way has been quite nice. You mentioned British only tournaments when you were talking about returning. Obviously, it was sort of in the British Championships where, in, but well, two years running where you had great success. How were those yeah. moments? It was in one. It was Manchester and Nottingham, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. Yeah, one in Manchester, one in Nottingham. Yeah. The first Welsh person ever to win. Yeah. It's quite an quite an achievement for the uh, for the CV. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of nice. I mean, we've had some really good players in the past, um, men and women, who who haven't been able to do it. And, and it's no easy feat, obviously, with the standard of squash in England at the moment, a minute as well. And in in all the like history, we've had players that have come so close. So it was, it was really nice to, to do that and to bring it back to Wales and keep it there for a couple of years was, was quite nice. Um, and yeah, show that you know we can we can compete even with smaller. We can compete, and I know hopefully um, we have Joel's in the final this year of the men's um, narrowly missed out. So he's he's really young too, and hopefully you know we won't be the only two. I think there's a lot of players behind us that will hopefully keep keep flying that, and hopefully the it will just continue to 
evolve. As you say, is it a bright, bright future for the for the new crop coming through for squash? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think you know, there's always going to be gaps. Sometimes there's gaps between people um, and different different ages and stuff. That always happens. But I think it's good to see to have a cut. Like there's there's probably four or five of us now on the tour competing worldwide that are, that are all doing really well. And I think that always helps the juniors have something to aspire to. Um, and the junior, the juniors, there's a lot of them now that want to play, and they also they want to go professional. Whether they do or not is is another matter because it's not it's, it's not that easy, obviously. But um, yeah, I think I think it's a bright future for for the for the kids coming through, and hopefully they can progress through the through the ranks. What would your advice, you know, as someone who's been there and done that and taken the risks of leaving school and reached, you know, not not when when I say the top. As, as good as yeah. anyone has done in Wales, you know, yeah. what would your advice be to those looking up to you as the role model? I always say, like, it, it's, it's, it's a really hard, it's, you know, people think, I think that it's like a really easy job and, and stuff and it's, it takes its toll, it's, it's not easy, but at the same time, I think you just have to enjoy it. I've always enjoyed playing and I always enjoyed traveling and competing. Um, so I would always tell any junior to like work hard and just enjoy it because, you know, your careers don't last forever. We, we're not going to be playing until we're 50 or 60. It just doesn't obviously happen. So make the most of it and, and really try and just get as much out of your potential that you possibly can. Um, and, I, yeah, my main motto is always enjoy it because if you don't enjoy it, you won't, you won't do well because you don't want to be there. So My mum always said to me growing up, if you, if you enjoy your job, you never work a day in your life. And I think that's Exactly. The, yeah. Absolutely. People just get too screwed up with, winning, losing, all that kind of stuff, and it's so easy to get into, I mean, I've done it myself, like, you know, you've had really bad times where you're losing, and you're like, oh. but at the end of the day, if you are enjoying it, and you are working hard at what you need to work on, then, as you said, you, you'll never work a day in your life, really, so. Do you have any, we were, we were t talking just before you got on, do you have any sort of superstitions, lots of, lo lots of athletes <laughs> sort of have a pre-game ritual, where they listen to a certain song, or... You've seen Nadal in the tennis doing this with every... the left one. Yeah, exactly, doing everything with his head. Do you have one? Oh, I have loads. <laughs> it's, oh, honestly, and as I get older, I seem to be having more. And it's like, you, you just can't not do it either. I have the exact one of um, putting my left shoe on before my right shoe. Absolutely. That's a must. That's a must. <laughs> I just cannot put my squash shoes on without putting the left one on first. Um Oh, I have a few. I have. Um, I always like to warm up on the left hand side of the court as well, um, which is not always easy. If you get introduced onto the court second, it's not always the easiest thing. So that, that one's kind of uh, doesn't really matter. But definitely, I think I have some that I don't even know that I do, I bet. Um, have you ever put your right shoe on first and then gone, no, and taken it off to put the left one on? No, no I have. And I'm like, wait, wait, no, I've got to take it off. <laughs> and rush to take it off. Um, and yeah, like certain things, like eating certain things. If I've, I'm, I'm quite like, if I've started the week and I've won my first match and I've done something, I'll probably do the same thing the whole week. I love those sort of superstitions. Yeah. You, I mean, you play, you play a lot of football now. Obviously, not yeah. to the same standard as Tesney would be in squash. But do, do you have any quirks? Do you uh, have anything that you do? I, you, I used to have to put like my left shin pad on you first. Know? It's the same, I same know, thing. I don't know, same, a similar way, but I just don't know why. If I put the white one on, literally have to take it, take everything off again. It, do all of it again. I think it was Kelly. Like weird. Was it Kelly Holmes who used to talk about her sort of ritual before a run in the Olympics, and she used to wake up at the exact minute and oh, eat wow. at the same minute, and, and all these things. It just it, it's crazy, but it's funny how many sports people do it. Do you, do you have any of your colleagues, or sort of do you know any of the other? squash stars that, that have um, a, a quirk you know a lot of them do and it it kind of depends like where they come from as well they kind of like um oh so many people have so many different things there's you know a few squash players that you can tell they won't you know they have to let you walk off the court first or they'll have to hit a certain shot and it like has to be a good one and then they'll walk off you know and, and you'll see them like mess it up a few times and they're still going and i'm sat down in my chair thinking you want to take some rest like you need to sit down <laughs> Um, there's definitely a few different quirks of certain things and people are very particular.
you, you, you know, you've travelled the world playing it, and we mentioned that beautiful course in, in Cairo. Is there any yeah. other places where you've been, or sort of any places in the world which your job has taken you to, which you'd love to go back to? Yeah, I think um, one was Cayman Islands. Um, we went there for a, a World Champs. I think it was it was literally, I just started playing professionally, I think, and then we played about a year or so, and we went there, and it was the most unreal place I've ever been to. And they had, like, the glass court was, like, set up on this, like, end of the marina, and it was boiling hot, and it was, like, somewhere you should definitely not go to play squash because you should go there on holiday. <laughs> so a lot of the girls were kind of struggling especially after they lost, it was like, we just wanted to like go to the beach, and so probably there would definitely like to go back and visit um, as a holiday, but there's plenty of places that, like, I could tell you that are my favourite spots in terms of New York, we're playing Grand Central Terminal, Yeah. Um, that's up there with probably one of the best best venues, obviously that's where I got my, that's where I hit my ankle this year, so maybe yeah. won't go back next year, but um, <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. You've that's, probably, in, that's probably my favourite one, I'd say. You've played in, in one of my face, favourite places in the world as well, in Monte Carlo. In Oh, Monte Carlo, yes, great place. It's one of my favourite places in the world, that is. I absolutely really? love Monaco. Have you ever uh, been to, seen when it's sort of Grand Prix season over there? No, the and I have a really good friend there as well, who um, I went last summer and did a bit of training there off-season. Um, absolutely loved it. Saw a different, completely different side to it. We normally go in November, um, and it's, it's it's okay. Like it's not freezing, but it's also not obviously very warm. Yeah. Um, and I did some off-season training there last year, um, and it was unbelievable. The change in it was just ridiculous. In August was absolutely beautiful, and and she was saying the same. Should you have to come in May in yeah. Grand Prix season and come and. Um, go to like the parties and do stuff like that. So I'm sure once I finish playing, I will definitely be going there. I would, I would wholeheartedly recommend it. My family have done it the last two years, and it's, it's like an experience really? like no other place in the world. I've never, never witnessed anything like it. It's. Uh... And to be honest, I'm not really into um, Formula One, but the whole thing just makes me want to go. Absolutely. None of my family like it. No, <laughs> none of my family like it. Just go for the experience. It, it, it is genuinely worth it just for the atmosphere. It's, it's really. It, you know, it's. I'm sure it's not like Carnival in Rio, but the sort of everywhere you go, every side street, people are selling fruits of champagne and hand oh. dinner. It's just, yeah, it's. I saw that you'd been there and I just wanted to mention it. Definitely, yeah, I definitely have to go. I just can't believe that they, the roads are obviously just like the main the main roads normally. Like, yeah. Because obviously it's such a small sp- uh, place as well. Where's the squat? Where are the squash courts in there? Because the tennis courts are phenomenal looking, and the views that they have from there. Are the squash courts anywhere close? Um, the squash court is actually in the building of the football stadium. Oh right, in the oh I can't remember the name of the stadium. I can't remember the name. It's got uh, the arches at the end. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, Saint, Saint Louis the, Stadium. That's it. Yeah, yes. that's it. Good memory. Um, <laughs> it's like actually football. like you go in the building and then. Um, I guess you kind of go up to the football pitch and downstairs is all the squash courts. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, really. it's, uh, that's a strange looking stadium as well with those arches. Where, it's where Monaco play, isn't it? But uh... Yeah, I went, I went to watch a match um, last year there and it was it was amazing, but the it was completely different. I mean, I follow Liverpool, like massive Liverpool fan, and I've never <laughs> been to a better stadium in Anfield and I was sat there and thinking, this is really weird. It was a, such a different atmosphere than, than an English stadium. That's for sure. Yeah. You've made a, you've made a definite friend here with that. Like we're we're both big Cardiff fans, huge Cardiff fans. But uh, okay. now I, we both say Liverpool are our second team. But now, yeah, p- good choice. But yeah, <laughs> now particularly would say. Uh, are you looking forward to the game on the weekend then? Oh, so- I can't wait. I, well, I'm firstly looking forward to tonight because we need Arsenal to win tonight, and then hopefully. We can do it on Sunday, but when I, Sunday and then go up celebrating. Exactly, absolutely. <laughs> when when this all, all happened, I was thinking it would just happen to us, wouldn't it? That we don't get to win the league when we're about to win it. Football on Sunday is going to be great because as big Cardiff fans as well, we're playing Leeds, who are one of our not necessarily local rivals, but biggest rivals in terms of the game. So uh, we've got a whole day of it on Sunday to look forward to. Oh, what a day! What a day! Uh, if people sort of didn't know about squash obviously we, we've played it a few times but not not professionally at all we didn't understand the rules if you were trying to encourage someone to go watch it or take it up how would you sort of sell them the sport because it's so fast paced isn't it yeah Whew. 
that's tough. I think I would say, as you said, it, it's exciting and it's fast. Um, especially if you watch good players play, it's. It, they, I think the only problem to our sport is that potentially, the top top players like world number ones, whatever, they make it look so easy that you actually can be sat off and think, "Oh, that looks too easy. Why would I play that?" Until you try it. So I think. I would always encourage people to try it first because then you'll realise how hard it actually is. Um, but if I was trying to sell it, I would say it's a fast, exciting game that it's the only one, only one sports that you share the same space. Like all the other racket sports, obviously you don't. So um, I think just what sells it is the athleticism that you have to have, as well as the it has such people call it the physical chess which is quite a, a funny term for it, but it, it kind of works because it's a very tactical and mental game as well as obviously being so physical. I've never heard that comparison before. I love that. Physical yeah, a few chess. people have said it is, and I'm like, uh, is it? I mean, I think chess is very hard and way more tactical as well, but it kind of has a, a sort of, the higher levels you go is very tactical and very mental as well. I, you you couldn't be more right about how physically exhausting it is. I've played a few games of tennis and gone, that was tiring. After a few games of squash, you're as, <laughs> uh, absolutely lying down on the floor, exhausted, because it is constant and you're turning, you know, with tennis, it's very much on the side to side, you know, sometimes yeah. it's the net shots, but you're, you're, you're all over the place, left, right, yeah. twisting, turning, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I think... It's very physically demanding, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Tesli, thank you very, very much for joining us. We, uh, oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. No, massively appreciate it. We will uh, keep an eye out and hopefully speak to you again in the future after another yes. success and another tournament. Hopefully. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.